Hi, my name's Jake. Um, thanks, Alex, for that. Uh, I'm the director of the distribution tech team, and I'm going to talk through some of the details of what we're focused on inside the distribution center, uh, the large grocery warehouses we run to replenish our fulfillment operations. Um, some of the challenges we have are a bit unique because of the products that we carry. Uh, stowing and picking operations, for example, are particularly expensive because of the way we have to handle products for either their crushability, their temperature sensitivity, or cross-contamination concerns. Uh, on the quality assurance side, um, doing the right quality assurance processes helps us make sure that we have the right amount of product in the building and it hasn't been subjected to spoilage or or damage in some way that would prevent us from being able to meet downstream demands. And with groceries, these are particularly sensitive because of the perishability uh, aspect. Um, on the labor side, planning at the day and shift level can be challenging. Like we don't want to over allocate labor, but at the same time, there's a lot of volatility in how products arrive at our distribution centers and the demand for them to leave the distribution centers and, and replenish downstream spokes. So it's not uncommon uh, for for trucking schedules to change dramatically for inbound or for demand to be sudden uh, for an outbound spoke. Uh, and these are some of the things we have to accommodate for. This leads to us making uh, a lot of different trade-offs in the way that we look at optimization in the distribution center. Um, when it, we're, we're talking about the processes that we're running under the roof, uh, the, the investment we make in one process will often have an impact of the the cost driven in another. Uh, so for example, the stowing operation can have a large impact on the picking operation where you end up placing products has a big impact on what it takes to get them back out of the building. Um, so balancing these costs uh, from, you know, between you know, the stowing and picking processes is one of the things we invest a lot in because the optimizations don't tend to happen in a vacuum. They tend to propagate across the processes inside the building. Beyond that, in the larger network, uh, we have to make trade-offs for how we invest in, for example, uh, stacking a pallet that's going to leave one of our distribution warehouses uh, so that it can be received efficiently at one of the spoke uh, stores or fulfillment centers. So the way we, we can benefit by, for example, stacking specifically to a store's layout or their planogram and a downstream spoke, uh, which can be more expensive in the DC, but at the network level, there's a benefit for it because we're sending pallets out to so many locations and the labor there is often more concentrated. So we get benefits from that larger investment in the distribution center uh, paying off in the larger network. And, and this is where we have to partner with some of our peer teams to make sure we understand those, those network effects well. Um, and our, our labor planning for day and shift level, we have to be flexible enough to accommodate not just those inbound and outbound uh, shipment variations, but also demand for ad hoc labor uh, for running quality processes as a result of, of damage in the warehouse uh, or just more product being present that's perishable than we might have anticipated. The nature of optimization in the warehouse uh, goes well beyond the software world. Uh, many of my previous projects, the optimization has been heavily focused on the software or what it takes for a user to get through uh, a user interface. Uh, our problems are more interesting uh, in that way. Uh, we tend to focus beyond just the, the software tools that associates are using, but those are important and they're a big part of the technology aspect for optimization. Um, but the amount of time people have to spend moving from one location to another and where products are placed in the warehouse are also major aspects of how we optimize the internal operation. And one of the unique aspects of grocery is the seasonality of products is, uh, it, it drives a lot of change over the course of the year. So uh, produce items or holidays, uh, you know, their, their presence or proximity to holiday can really change how fast products are moving through the warehouse. Uh, so we have to be able to not only pick product placement that's, that's efficient at a given time, we have to be able to adapt it quickly uh, and allow space to be reutilized uh, as, as products move out of the building and empty out. In terms of how we apply these optimizations, uh, one of the things that, that is super important for us is that the, the context for a given decision matters. I mentioned stowing and picking and then also network effects. Uh, all too often, we, we rely heavily on the individual person under the roof to make decisions uh, right now about how to optimize a process that has a lot of downstream uh, impact. 
we can do a much better job by guiding them on the, the larger context items where they can't possibly have awareness of what's happening at downstream stores we can uh, from a system aspect. Uh, and allow those individuals to really focus on the things that they are uniquely positioned uh, to do better than our systems could. Their focus on safety and quality and knowing how to uh, handle product uh, at the individual case level is something we can't guide them on. And we want to free up more of their time to do that, keep their hands free to do that and, and keep their heads focused uh, on that portion of the work uh, to make it as as safe and quality conscious as possible while we'll focus on the efficiency aspects uh, at the system level. Uh, under the roof processes in a lot of ways, like just there's there's significant benefit to just get from rule based uh, optimization, uh, making sure that things are done correctly in terms of how products are stacked and that things don't get crushed. Um, but there's a lot of room beyond these simple rule-based systems uh, that we're going to need to utilize to keep our costs controlled. Uh, we'll be using closed loop systems on, on all of the under the roof processes that we run in the warehouse to try and optimize them over the course of time as those systems learn uh, about different outcomes in, in terms of different experiments that we'll run under, under the roof to try and find the most optimal paths to train these systems and allow them to give guidance to associates. Uh, that helps them optimize at the network level. Uh, optimization will be applied to routes for stowing and picking, as well as optimizing you know, like the location of products under the roof. Like it's not just the the operations that individuals are doing actively moving things around, but we'll leverage systematic optimization to to get the right placement of products. Uh, as I mentioned, that seasonality aspect things moving out of the building and no longer being available for some period of time that frees up space for other things. The optimal way to utilize that space is something that we can predict uh, using these kinds of systems and, and, and provide this optimization uh, at a level uh, that doesn't require careful thought from the associates under the roof. They just need to know where things have moved to and we can guide them to that uh, from a systems perspective. Um, Optimization of individual tasks is necessary, but it's not going to meet all of the goals that we have. Uh, the, the sequence of tasks uh, and the expertise uh, of the individual performing the tasks has a big impact uh, on the overall efficiency under the roof. Uh, and frequently, task prioritization has to be done dynamically. Uh, getting back to the situation of, of trucks showing up unexpectedly or arriving late and labor being free when you might not have anticipated it. Um, there's a lot of opportunity uh, for tasks to be dynamically reprioritized to make sure that labor is used efficiently uh, and also that we meet priority demand uh, in a way that, that, that gets product out of the building quickly as well so we can reprioritize labor quickly uh, by having tasks constantly kind of monitored and being able to replan on a regular basis. Like an additional benefit for this is that it prevents prevents managers from needing to intervene and work as frequently. So we can do more uh, to, to, to keep the managers free to focus on other value added tasks. Uh, and, and we don't always wanna optimize in terms of assigning a person to a task from the most efficient uh, way to do that. Sometimes it's better for us, depending on what the, the current backlog of under the roof uh, tasks might be, um, to give folks experience in areas they might not have it and looking for those opportunities for our systems to ask associates to engage in tasks that they're appropriately trained on but may, have, may not have much practice on when the opportunity exists uh, so that they can be more efficient in the future on those tasks. The quality aspects um, is another area where there's, there's significant variation in, in kind of reasons for task assignment. Um, there's a certain amount of, of quality processes required just for regulatory requirements. Uh, and this is, tends to focus on uh, doing randomly selected counts. So we have some need to be able to say, you know, count bin X full of product Y now and give the results back. And if it doesn't match with inventory, we recount it until we get two consistent counts so that we can update our, our inventory levels. Um, but for other products that we know are volatile from a quality standpoint in some way, either they're easily damaged by under the roof operations or they're highly perishable. 
we can target our accounts more to those products and also to products that have been in the building longer, for example, uh, that might have been subjected to, you know, having more time to spoil or more opportunity to be damaged so that we can maximize the rate of defect correction uh, and then replace products uh, with demand to our vendors to get new products in under the roof uh, where those things have gone away. Uh, that helps us get a handle on our defects. And then on the produce uh, piece, uh, we also want to leverage machine vision uh, to, to grade produce in a more automated way. Uh, right now, we lean heavily on human expertise uh, to grade different kinds of produce uh, under the roof. Um, and, and, it, and it's a fair amount of training. We would like to, like, we'll always have that need under the roof to deal with exceptions, but we would, we would like to be able to, to use machines for a lot of that grading as well. Uh, and we think we can, uh, we can leverage some of the work that's already been done uh, in Amazon uh, to bring that grading capability uh, to, to machines and free up that labor to do other work. <clears throat> There's a lot of other optimizations um, that, that we apply or intend to apply uh, at the labor level. I mentioned some of these things earlier in the talk, um, but from, a, from an implementation standpoint, we know that we'll be moving to a kind of incrementally replanning as the day goes by. Um, there's always going to be some volatility in these uh, these physical operations in terms of when things arrive and what kind of demand is required downstream. And, and the way that the system works today or the way that buildings operate today, managers are frequently doing this replanning manually throughout the day, uh, knowing that some trucks are coming in late or arriving early. Uh, they may be kind of rapidly uh, reassigning uh, labor within the building uh, to try and meet the, the, the continuous changes in demand and then not being in a position to deal with higher level concerns. Uh, we want to make sure those, those management team members are really focused on the things they're uniquely uh, positioned to deal with. Uh, and we believe we can free them up by kind of continuously replanning labor throughout the day, uh, particularly as information flows in that lets us know that deliveries or demand uh, for, for, for products is changing over the course of time uh, so that we can dynamically replan multiple times per day uh, and have active notifications that go out uh, to folks either via their handhelds or other systems in the building uh, to make them aware of changes over the course of time. So pretty broad uh, set of coverage there. Did want to kind of take it down a level into the individual building after Alex's conversation with us about the, the, the network level effects and, and how we optimize there. Uh, thank you. Appreciate the time today.